Writing an equation from a graph, lesson 5.1b. We can use information presented in a graph to write an equation in slope-intercept form. Here you look, we have this graph and we can see that the line starts at 20. We can also count the rise and the run for the slope. Remember, M is the rise over run, and B is where the line crosses the y-axis at 20. Our equation would be y is equal to 10, our slope, x plus 20, where it crosses the y-axis. Remember, the x-axis is horizontal, the y-axis is vertical. And I always say you can remember that as y towards the sky. And the y-intercept B is where the line crosses the y-axis. If it crosses it above the x-axis, it will be a positive y-intercept B. If it crosses it below the x-axis, it will be a negative y-intercept B. A dentist charges a one-time x-ray fee plus a fee to fill a cavity. Use the graph to write an equation in slope-intercept form to represent the amount spent y. So we have our equation in slope-intercept form. Our y is going to be the total spent. m, the slope, is going to be the price per cavity. x is going to be the number of cavities that are fixed. And b is going to be that x-ray fee. We choose two points on the graph to find the slope, point 1 and point 2, with the x sub 1 and y sub 1 value, and the x sub 2, y sub 2 value. We use the slope formula to find the slope. So here we have point 1 and point 2. So our first x value is a 1, our first y value is 600, our second x value is 2, and our second y value is 1,000. Using the slope formula, we do the second y minus the first y, so we have 1,000 minus 600, that's going to give us 400, and we do the second x minus the first x, that's going to give us 2 minus 1, which gives us 1. We see the y-intercept is at 200. Now we use the slope, the 400 over 1, or 400, and the y-intercept, that 200, to write our equation. We have y is equal to 400x plus 200. So the total cost is $400 for the cost per each cavity that's fixed, multiplied by x, the number of cavities, plus $200, that x-ray fee. Now the average cost per cavity gets cheaper because the x-ray fee is only charged once. If we have one cavity fixed, it's going to cost $600 for the $400 cavity fee plus that $200 x-ray fee. But if we get two cavities filled, now it costs $1,000. That's $500 for each cavity if we average it out. And if we get three cavities filled, that's $1,400. That comes out to about $467 for each cavity. So because this is only being charged once, the more cavities you get filled, the cheaper it is on average per cavity. A cash register subtracts $2 from a $10 bakery gift card for every muffin the customer buys. Use the graph to write an equation in slope-intercept form. So, I want you to remember that we choose the points from left to right. So, it's falling to the right. We know this is a negative slope. And this will be point 1 and this will be point 2. We go from left to right, so that's point one, that's point two. We're going to have one for the first x and eight for the first y, and two for the second x and six for the second y. We use the slope formula to find the slope and identify the y-intercept b once we do that. So we have point one and point two. For our y values, the second y value is six, the first one is 8, so we have 6 minus 8, which is going to give us a negative 2. Then we do the second x, 2, minus the first x, 1, and we get a 1. That's negative 2 over 1, or negative 2. And we can see the y-intercept is at 10. We use the slope and y-intercept to write the equation. 
we have y is equal to negative 2x plus 10. We know this is a plus 10 because it's on the positive part. It's in the positive 10 position. So the remaining balance, y, is equal to negative 2, which is the cost per muffin, x, the number of muffins, plus 10, the original balance on the gift card. The x value is 0 at the y-intercept because the y-axis intersects the x-axis at 0. You can see here's negative 1, there's positive 1, 0 is in between. So the y-intercept is where 0 is on the x-axis. The x-axis and y-axis are two number lines that intersect each other at 0 for x and 0 for y as perpendicular lines. We can write an equation in slope-intercept form by counting the rise over run for the slope and finding where the line crosses the y-axis for the y-intercept b. What we do is we use intersections of lines to find the rise over run. Here's an intersection where the two lines cross, and here's an intersection. So we can use these to find the rise over the run. We have a rise of 10 and a run of 3, according to the number scales on this coordinate plane. And if we choose these intersecting lines, we'll avoid fractional units on the grid. If we didn't choose the intersections of lines, the rise over the run, and we chose a spot like right here to right here, we would have had two-thirds right here. This is two-thirds of one of these squares on the grid. It's easier to choose the intersection of two lines because then we'll have an absolute number and we'll be more accurate. Our slope-intercept equation is y is equal to mx plus b. Well, we know that the y-intercept is 30, so that's a plus 30. We know the rise is 10 and the run is 3. We have y is equal to 10 thirds x plus 30. And we could even change this and simplify this, couldn't we, to 3 and a third? So we could use the slope formula to find the slope and write down the points for x and y, or we could just count the rise and the run for the slope. We're finished with part b. We're moving on to the last part, writing an equation from a description. Keep in mind, when you're writing the equation, it's very easy to discount the rise over run, but it's also good to know how to use the slope formula to find the slope. Have a wonderful day, and please join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.